let's take a look at the Assassin from Gamer Storm, and it's a uh, company of Deep Cool. So if you guys have heard of Deep, Deep Cool before, well, we got the Assassin. This is one large unit. Look at this thing. Oh, almost knocked that over. This thing's heavy. A lot, a lot of thermal mass here. We've got a nice large. It's all nickel plated. We got a nice large copper plate on the bottom that is mirrored. It's totally mirrored. And uh, all the heat pipes, they all go inside there, and then they're reheated so that they all weld together, um, and that just makes the dissipation better. So there you go. This thing's really large. It comes with a 140 millimeter and a 120 millimeter fan. The 140 millimeter fan goes in the front, and the 120 goes in the middle. And it does come with some extra mounting options if you guys wanted to mount another 140 on the back. And here's the 140 uh, fan right here. Playing with this. Those things will cut you. Do not mess with this thing when it's on. This is like metal. They're sharp. And there also are some ridges on there to uh, help, I guess, direct the air to make sure there's no turbulence. But yeah, these things are... These things are pretty sharp. Now, Wendell, you got to play with this a little bit in ADA. Uh, you ran some system stability tests. Uh, what do you think about this? It's it's a pretty solid heatsink. It's very massive, so I would be concerned about shipping a computer with this installed or or jostling a computer around a whole bunch. So if you travel with your computer or anything like that, it could put a lot of stress on the CPU socket. But overall, it's a pretty solid performer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was I was quite pleased in, in everything about it, including the aesthetic, which is uh, rare for me because I'm such a snood when it comes to aesthetics. Um, now, again, that's totally up to you. Aesthetics have nothing to do with the overview video that we're making right now. First off, let's talk about the two different fans that it comes with. Now, the 140 millimeter fan, um, they're, both fans are 25 millimeters thick. Um, I, I'll mention this right now that since I'm, I just mentioned the, the thickness. The thickness. The uh, 120 millimeter fan in the middle, if you wanted to use your own fan, you want to make sure that it is, um, I guess, less thick than 25 millimeters because if it's any thicker, uh, you're going to have to worry about some grinding noises or, or something. I mean, maybe you can bend <laughs> this thing apart a little bit, but yeah, you There's want to make gap. sure it's. You want to make sure that it, that whatever fan you put in there is thin. Mind so. the gap. <laughs> exactly, mind the gap. <laughs> 140 millimeter fan goes in the front. Uh, the max RPM is 1400, give or take 10 percent. And uh, the noise is 18.2 to 32 decibels. So depending on, you know, how it's running. It's also a hydro bearing fan, which will ensure a long life and pretty you know, quiet functionality. 120 millimeter fan is similar. Um, it runs at uh, 1200 RPM, give or take 10%. And the noise on that one is 23.2 decibels. So all that together, you have two fans running uh, it was a little louder than some of the Noctuas that we just tested, but those were only running one fan. And uh, as far as the performance goes, well, let's go ahead and take a look at what we uh, what we did here. We let this run for 20 minutes, and we're using a Haswell CPU, so we don't have an exact number because it goes up and down with Haswell. Uh, and, and the Haswell parts are also, um, they're very moody. We were also using ADA64 stress test because we thought that would be a more real world. It's like, does this thing keep your overclock cool and stable? Yeah, and that's totally different than Prime 95. Prime 95 does not really work at all uh, with the Haswell platform, and it's not recommended to be used with the Haswell platform. You can damage your system. Hopefully they'll update it soon. And it's because the the um, stuff in Prime 95 requests more voltage than you've specified, so your CPU runs a higher voltage than you've indicated. All right, so as you can see here, after 20 minutes, uh, you know, it's, it's hitting around 61, 62. It's not getting that hot. Um, and again, with, with like a stock cooling unit, usually runs at like 90 or something plus 90 plus so it's a pretty good performance here let's take a look at an overclock we did a 4.6 gigahertz overclock we left it running for 20 minutes and it throttled it throttled on everything just to let you guys know um it throttled on everything that we've tested so far except for our corsair h100i and it just did barely. throttle it just barely yeah it throttled a couple times but on the third test it didn't throttle and yep. we had to, we had to, we actually had to help it out a little bit by pressing on it <laughs> <laughs> this one did not um this particular heatsink also did not crash. So even though we got throttling, the system was completely stable. <laughs> it did crash with some of the smaller, uh, you know, like 120 millimeter heatsinks that we tested out with the overclock. It just actually absolutely crashed. So this one was able to run. Um, it did get really hot above 80 a couple times, but it usually ran around somewhere in the 70s. Uh, but there's a little bit of up and down there. You can see on the graph, it's going up and down and up and down. You may be able to tweak the fan profiles and get better performance. We just ran with whatever the Asus wanted, the Asus board wanted to do as far as the fan profiles go. But this was also with two fans. And you can also add a third fan, so that, that may also help as well. Um, this is a large unit, but it's not going to get in the way of your RAM, and it doesn't get in the way of your PCI Express expansion slots. 
Well, depending on how you've got your, your fan set up, if you had all three fans, it, well, the front fan might be in the way of your RAM. But yeah, you if your RAM has really back. tall fins, it might be pretty close. You can always adjust the fan to be a little, little higher, but it's not going to cool all these fins. And there's a gazillion fins right here. You can see the design also has a, a texture. You know? Or you can set up the fan for pull and move it to the back. Uh, it doesn't say Haswell on the back of the box, but we used it with the Haswell system and it worked just fine. And it was it felt secure and tight. Uh, it didn't feel loose and flimsy like some of the different cooling units out there we've put on there. It felt a little bit loose. This uh, one, actually, I was very impressed with the motherboard underside mounting kit because it had little rubber standoffs to prevent you from damaging your motherboard. Yeah, all the traces on the back. Some of them are so close to the the holes, the, trace, the different trace routes. So this one is definitely going to prevent that. And you can also tighten it down a little bit more because of the rubber on the back. Yeah. And I, I wish I wish everybody did that. That's like such a, a smart thing to do is put rubber on, on the back. As far as the overall performance goes, um, we also have the Noctua NH-U14S around. And uh, that one was slightly quieter just for, you know, just listening with the naked ear. This one you could hear. Um, but it was still extremely quiet, like way quieter than, than most of, you know, units I've seen out there on the market. And it was slightly warmer like we're talking a couple degrees warmer with the overclock and pretty comparable uh, as a stock clock so uh, to, you know keep that in mind i'm not sure why it was warmer i actually expected this one to be uh, better because it seems like it has more thermal mass it's larger it's got two fans um, it definitely has more thermal mass and it has two it, fans uh, maybe it's very it's surprising the, the heat pipes are only six millimeter so even though there's more of them uh, that could be a thing the other thing i noticed on the bottom is where the heat pipes enter the the plate right here on the bottom there's a little bit of space around each one of them. You can see that where it's mounted together. But on the inside there, they are remelted and welded to, um, you know, welded to the base. So that's going to help with the heat dissipation. I, I think maybe I would like to see this with like eight millimeter heat pipes. Probably be a little bit more expensive, but fewer. But, I'm not wondering if fewer eight millimeter heat, heat pipes would be slightly better. The other thing that could have uh, made the temperature a little bit higher would be the thermal paste. We used the thermal paste that came with each of the units. It looked like good stuff that came with this, but um, possibly the, the stuff that came with the Noctua was slightly better, and that could have you know, accounted for the couple degrees difference. But all in all, it's still a very solid unit, and I really like the fans that come with this. The fans they have a rubberized, um, and they're kind of bendable, so you're not going to get a lot of uh, noise or vibrational noise or anything like that with these. So that, that's good as well. It'd be fun to get out the blowtorch and solder uh, the heat pipes to the base and see how much solder it'll soak up because that might improve thermal con uh, conductivity as well. So that's the uh, Gamer Storm Assassin. One hell of a large heat sink. See you guys next time.